Courage is contagious, and every day people like yourself are being inspired to help bring more love into this world. This is Skull Babylon, and you're about to listen to episode 101 of Paradigm Shift Radio. In this episode, we root the conversation back to some basics as we discuss how to shift the paradigms with love. Throughout the episode, we were joined by our beautiful community members, such as John Erb, who brought attention to the importance of family and having a tribe. Following that, our friend Alon joins us, having freshly returned from another free hug session that day in Toronto, and reminds us that even if we can help change one person's day, then we in turn have helped change the whole world. Afterwards, our friend Amir joins us again as he gets into the flow and shares a bit about his own personal shift of the paradigm. And at the end of the episode, our friend Jessica Starshine called in to share some beautiful reminders about how we can grow to love ourselves and how we can get out into the world and take action. Everything in our path is there to help us grow, so thank you so much for being a part of this amazing experience. Tune in again for future episodes and call in to share your voice, your story, and your thoughts with a global audience as we all continue to inspire one another. Share this episode with your friends, continue the conversations and actions in your community, go out and give some free hugs, connect others to the tribe, be love, and enjoy the flow. One love. The infinity within me sees honors, and respects the infinity within you. Namaste once again, sisters, brothers, lovers, and shifters from all across the globe. You're tuned in for another inspirational, exciting episode of Paradigm Shift Radio. This is your good buddy, Brendan, a.k.a. Big Skull, a.k.a. Skull Babylon, a.k.a. Wolf Shield. We got a bunch of stuff lined up for you here tonight on the episode, and by that, I mean we have a lot of opportunity for you to be able to call in to Paradigm Shift Radio, to be able to get involved with this community discussion So tonight on Paradigm Shift Radio, we are going to be talking about how to shift, excuse me, how to shift the paradigms with love 101. So consider this a bit of an introduction course, so to speak. We are in episode 101, which just sort of gives an excuse to sort of just also recap, but sort of go back to the basics and just be able to touch base as to things we've accomplished, tactics that have worked, techniques that have been used time and time again, such as our free hug techniques, things that we have often talked about here on Paradigm Shift Radio. But it's important, it's important to be able to repeat ourselves, to be able to say and share our stories as to like yes like this is there's some awesome stuff that is going on out there for example our good buddy Alon who you guys know he's an amazing guy he's doing all sorts of stuff all across Canada right now he is in Toronto we'll probably be hearing from him again but of course I want to be able to hear and invite more people on the community onto this show because Paradigm Shift Radio is an interactive show for us as consciousness to practice communicating to practice sharing our ideas asking questions sharing experiences and to be able to just evolve together and talk Talking about things is just one of those ways to do it. And of course, talking about it here is just part of the bigger picture. And we want to really encourage people to go out there and to take action where they are. So, of course, before we officially get rolling into the show, I encourage people to check out ParadigmShiftCentral.com. If you have not yet, there you'll find all sorts of conscious media that I've been putting up over the years. That's pretty much this whole thing began. Sorry, and if, and as as I before I get into before I get into this little story, so to speak, just looking for that eleven eleven in the live chat. I, I know things are good, but I just want to be able to ping it back off you guys, make sure everything is sounding a okay, and then moving forward from there. But this whole thing, this whole thing, thank you, Bonnie. This whole thing of Paradigm Shift, of Paradigm Shift Central, because the radio show wasn't even the beginning of it. The radio show is something that we've only been doing for two years now, but this whole thing began about five years ago, and and like you. I, too, went through my own awakening process, and this was something that I had always been thinking outside the box. I had always been curious. I had always been seeking knowledge in my own ways, knowledge and experience. And then by the time I was about 21, 22, and uh, side note, I'm 27 now, as of a few days ago, as of yesterday, or two days ago, because that's when my birthday was, July 18th. So thank you so much, everybody, for the birthday wishes. But yeah, so when I was like 20, 21 and stuff like that, I began just really noticing aspects of the universe that were undeniable. And what I meant by this were things like synchronicity, things like sacred geometry, things like the idea of even just reincarnation kind of making sense without anybody really having to convince me of it. I'm just like, yeah, that kind of sounds like something the universe would do, right? Like, why would we go through a whole a whole lifetime? Why would it designate all this energy just to, like, throw it in the trash, so to speak? Like, no, like, the experiences that we have through our lifetimes is added to 
the collective. It's like data on the hard drive. And the interesting part is that each one of us is like an individual node within this matrix, but all of us as nodes have act- have access back to the main kernel, like the main kernel being like source, like the mother brain or something like that. But that in itself is the aspect of reality that contains everything, all the data, the higher soul. And then through there, it's this levels of, uh, it's, it's hierarchies of consciousness in a sense that where, I mean, just based on my best guess, that from where we are right now, we can admit that we're not the most like advanced entity in the universe but we are but then again like how, you know how is one thing more advanced than another but like the complexity of our experience is super complex but imagine it being more complex imagine there being other beings who perceive reality in their own paradigm and like you know even when you're just thinking of insects you're thinking of birds but start getting a little bit more multi-dimensional with things and that's where it starts to get you connected with the idea of like angels if you want to use that term but more so higher dimensional entities and again higher just relative to the comparison of our perception of reality higher referring to like if anything the best way i can describe it is like more vibrant more just even the rawness of its beauty is incredibly obvious in these other states and here it sort of hides itself behind an illusion but this whole illusion was set up so that we go through this process of remembering of being able to get to a point where we go aha Aha, this is this is something. This is something. This isn't just a bunch of people running around and expected to do 9 to 5 jobs. Like that's not why reality created it itself. It created itself so that it could go through that to know how to come out of it and to really be able to experience grace and really to be able to experience appreciation and empowerment knowing that we are co-creating the reality around us, like alongside of it. We are working with the universe, for the universe, for the future of the experiences which we have yet to find ourselves in. But knowing that there are other aspects of ourselves that will be going through those in their own place, in their own space and time. And just being able to say, like, yes, like that other part of me that isn't directly experienced by me is still me. And that me that I, the other me that I'm talking about is you, is the namaste. So this is the type of stuff that I commonly am excited to be able to talk about on Paradigm Shift Radio because it really brings us back to simple ideas such as as you think, so shall you become. Like each person is the center of their own universe, so to speak, which, which I mean, some people can sort of explain that in different ways. It's an interesting idea, but more so that like every atom is a black hole every aspect of reality is holographic and a single ripple in one place can affect the entire system. Which brings me to my point as to why shifting the paradigms with love is such a valuable thing to invest our energy towards. Because yes, we might get the satisfaction of being able to make someone's day, but that person will continue to go on and maybe they'll make someone else's day. And making someone's day is a very, you know, what does it mean to have our day made? So that's just another question that we can try playing around with. But yes, love is intelligent as bonnie is saying in the live chat so yeah definitely looking forward to getting into the conversation tonight on paradigm shift radio it looks like we already got a person in the queue um my intuition is telling me i'm pretty sure i know who this is and again like you know that's another thing like listening to your intuition developing a relationship with your intuition understanding that the sixth sense is just sort of referring to the aspects of ourselves that we don't commonly pay attention to and, you know, this is sort of like, well, I, I don't want to spoil it. <laughs> I'll let other people explain it. So with that said, we're going to bring on the caller in the next moment. Before that, I just want to remind you guys that please encourage you to check out the main website at ParadigmShiftCentral.com because there's a lot of awesome stuff there. If this community is new to you, you can literally spend like a good couple weeks and months going through all the stuff through the Paradigm Shift Central website. And just heads up right now, one of the plugins for like the multiple videos displaying at once may be glitching right now, but I know they're fixing it. But just giving you a heads up so try visiting the website another again if it looks like there's like chunks missing but anyways check that out and of course on there you'll find the donate button if you find value in the awesomeness that is paradigm shift radio that i dedicate myself to that i invest my energy towards because i know it's making a difference and it's something that it's it's very hard for me to make up an excuse to not do paradigm shift radio because at this point i understand how much of a difference it makes and of course because i have fun doing it i love being able to spend my time with you guys and to be able to get your feedback and to know that like 
yes, like my energy is giving you energy to give other people energy. And it's just like this cyclical thing because then your energy gives me energy. And that's kind of how it works. It's the infinity loop in itself. But with that said, please check out the donate button at paradigmcentral.com slash donate. And there you can sign up as a monthly supporter for only a couple dollars a month. Microtransactions are the ways of the future. Plain and simple. Nobody has to worry about breaking their wallet. And everybody wins because it allows me more grace and ease to be able to get through the process of doing the show. It takes time and et cetera, et cetera, post-production, et cetera. But just encouraging you to be able to help support the future of this community. So that includes like more buttons, more awesomeness, more videos that I really want to get into. And stay tuned. You're going to find out some, I'm going to be posting some new videos. I don't want to spoil it, but you'll see those soon. So check out youtube.com slash Skull Babylon. And of course, donate if you can. But other ways to support Paradigm Shift are through getting yourselves conscious shirts. The white ones are available now and you can find those at paradigmshiftcentral.com slash shirts and also through ordering the shift buttons. And the shift buttons are something within Shifting the Paradigms 101 will come up at some point and I'll get to those again. But of course, paradigmshiftcentral.com slash buttons. And to end off the community news, reminding you guys that if you want to get in the draw for your free shift buttons, every week we give away free shift buttons. That's what your funds are going towards supporting, among other things. Then send a message to facebook.com slash paradigmshiftradio. Let us know that you're listening and let us know that you want to be entered in the draw. Even if you're listening to this show in the future, then please let us know and we'll enter you in for the future draw. So there you go, guys. Thank you so much for everyone who's tuned in. We've got 31 users in the live chat. And uh, yeah, let's bring on our buddy. Let's see who's in the queue. So call it from area code 226. We're going to bring you on. Anybody else who wants to call in, please continue to do that. We are looking for more people. We're going to build up a circle here. We're going to attempt to propose and answer questions related to shifting the paradigms with love 101, how we are creating the future today. So with that said, call it from air code 226, bringing you on to the air. Here we go. Greetings, Hello, caller. Greetings, Brendan. It's John Erb here. Hello, John Erb. Welcome back. I'm sure I'm not the only one who is incredibly excited to hear your voice again. <laughs> oh, thank you. It's It's been a long time since, like I said last time I was on. So thanks for having me back. I'll just be brief tonight because I have another event to go to tonight. But I did want to chime in on what you were saying, and that is altering people's paradigms. And when I, I've been through a lot in terms of um, being political, being a activist, and you you tend to get arrested for activism in today's day and age. And one of the things I noticed when I was on trumped up charges and waiting in uh, the jail, Don Jail specifically, which I spent a few times in, was that it's important to keep realizing how much of an effect you have, even when you think you're at your lowest. I would carry a manila envelope with me every time I went to court, and so you'd be in a bullpen at the courthouse with about 20 different people. And I had a manila envelope, and on that manila envelope I had a very big uh, pencil letters. And that is, my favorite job is reminding people how special they are. And it's amazing how little it takes when someone's having a bad day to turn that around. And then you have that domino effect. Because if you change a person's perspective from a dark day to a day of brightness, then they go to work and they affect the people around them. They go home and they affect the people around them with that positive energy. All it takes to get your own paradigm moving is do something new that you've never done every day. That opens your opportunities. Do something new you've never done. Reach out and talk to someone you've never met before. You Mm -hmm. take a route you've never taken. Knock on a door you've never knocked on. Go into a store you've never been in. It's so simple to expand our horizons And so few people are doing it. Most people are living in that wheel where they go the same day over and over again for 2,000 days in a row. They get into the bind of other people's expectations on them. And so suddenly they're living other people's objectives, not their own. And as soon as people are living the objectives of the people around them instead of their own, then they're not even in the paradigm they want to be in. And many people 
unfortunately, are drones. Drones in that it's just like worker bees or worker ants. They get up, they go and do the same thing every day. They take the same route, and they do not change their own daily paradigm. And if you're stuck, if you're one of these drones, unfortunately, who is not going to get new opportunities because you're stuck with the same group of people every day, doing the same actions every day, driving down the same roads every day, eating at the same restaurants every day. And so, unfortunately, we have the potential to live a million different days in our life. But unfortunately, we're taught within the system that you're supposed to live the same day or the same lifestyle over and over again. Mm -hmm. And that's you know, what's considered a valid member of society. Yeah, John, I'll just jump in here. Just um, synchronicity, coincidence, call, call it what you will, um, or coincidence, two instances that coincide, coincidence. But um, on Reddit today, reddit.com, R-E-D-D-I-T.com, those of you who don't know the website, it's kind of like just things that people submit images, videos, links to. But anyways, there was a GIF, an animated video, short video today, and it was exactly what you just said, where it was this cute animation of a guy going through a cycle as a GIF. That's a short video of like just like him getting out of bed, him going in the shower, him going to work, and like him driving home, and then him going to bed, and him getting in the shower, and it just repeats, right? But you're right, like that's the scenario that we're in and i think that's a really interesting process because like right now in terms of people well uh, let me ask you this question in terms of people who are quote unquote like awake or like more awake by relative comparison and not as much a drone versus people who are drones how what, what's the ratio at right now like and and how much do you think that can change over the like re, in, in the near future how much can like it really just because it's been it's, it's increasing exponentially but go ahead yeah i know you got well, well, right now it's enormous. There are more people sitting at home doing nothing than ever before. <laughs> there are more people sitting at home doing nothing than ever before. And it, it comes down to when these people who are sitting at home currently playing video games every day or watching TV every day or lost in the Internet every day, it comes down to when will they get out and start living. A friend of mine and I actually came up with a co-creation this morning, and that is uh, I've had friends who were on TED Talks, and I've met some people who've done TED Talks, and I'm thinking the next step is TED Actions. Mm. Okay, you've had the talk, now let's move out of the lecture hall and actually do an action. Back when I was with Occupy in Toronto, we would have general assemblies. And I had an issue with general assemblies, because in these general assemblies, we were forced to get consensus. And you know how hard it is to get consensus of 50 people? Consensus is almost impossible to reach, and it can take a long process to get to it. And so I was realizing these general meetings where we just repeated what everyone said during a mic check was just a droning kind of action that had you speaking words that weren't even your own. And it was a form of mind program very weird for my program so i had an issue with the entire system that they were using what a group of us who split off and continued to occupy after the main occupied broke down we found a better system where we get together in a group and each person would say what they did that week mm -hmm. to support the, the occupy system or to do something and so everyone would share what they did, and then we'd go around the circle the next time, and we would say, well, what are we doing next week? And each person would say, or the next day, they would say, well, what are we, this is where I'm heading, this is what I'm working on. And then the third time we went around the circle, we had ideas of what would, should we do as a group when we leave this meeting space. Right. So then we had an action right after the meeting itself. And so this way, people were able to listen to other people who had ideas, and they could talk to the people afterwards and say, hey, I like what you're doing. Let me go in that direction with you. Because everyone should be able to go in their own direction. It's just nice if you can actually find other people who want to go there as well. I've been presenting for years a different way of looking at uh, psychology or a person's planning and things like that, their own lives. 
And I suggest people look at themselves as a ship. Everyone mm. is an individual ship that's been on its own journey, gone through many different storms, weathered many changes. And each person is absolutely their own ship. So then they meet someone else and they meet that someone and they think maybe they're going to the same island. And so sometimes they tie their ships together. And at some point, maybe in that relationship, a person realizes or one person on one boat doesn't get the storm that the other person on the other boat does or doesn't go through some terrible thing or have some post-traumatic stress or have some terrible situation happen. So sometimes a cataclysmic change happens to one of the people and not the other, in which case suddenly there's a navigational change on one of the boats and one person doesn't want to go to that island anymore. They want to go somewhere else. And then you have to make a choice. You either become a first mate to the other captain and get dragged along to the island that they want to go to, or you cut the ropes and you set the boats free and you move in the direction you intended to at the start. Many people end up either being settling in a lifestyle where they're a drag-along or a tag-along. A tag-along usually goes because they've got no better idea of, or objective in their own life. And so they see someone else with a strong objective and they just jump on their bandwagon. A drag-along is someone who feels loyal to the person, doesn't want to go there, but is taken along anyway. In a lot of the cases, it's kids. We have, as a society, ignored our children. So we have taught that children are, are seen but not heard and they're not in the family discussions. The mom and dad own the kids. They decide what's best and the kids don't have any input. And this is why families break down. Because to change the paradigm, we have to change how children are heard. Mm. Currently, children have no power and are considered useless until they're 18 or until they're working or until whenever. Currently, if they speak out against a parent, the parent doesn't know how to deal with it or sometimes is very concerned or sometimes overreacts. It's, it, there's a lot of problems currently with parents getting respect from their kids because the system has taught kids to disrespect their parents. The system has taught them to doubt their parents. Uh, parents on TV are taught, are, are shown and modeled as stupid or, you know, unable to be decent parents. And so it's up to the government. You can trust the government. The government has a better idea. And this is all to break down the tribe. The tribe is the natural organization of humanity, and they've broken the tribes. The smallest tribe is a family member or a family. But the system that we currently have breaks the tribal paradigm so that there's very little loyalty among family members and that your primary male or female role models that are near and dear to the kids tend to be a favorite teacher instead of a favorite relative. So this unfortunately sets them up to become loyal to the system instead of loyal to the family unit. And this mm -hmm. is the breakdown of our society as we have it. Because then we have kids who never do feel attached to anything or anyone. And these are the kids right now who are sitting at home in their basements or playing games or whatever because there's no real options for them. They know that the job market is outrageous. They know that there's 100 people with educations competing for each job. They know that in the big cities it's very hard to find an uh, apartment. So they feel very hopeless in the situation that they can't compete in today's markets. So once these people who are sitting at home and getting bored and on unemployment and hoping for that job realize they're surviving without all of that. They're sitting at home and they're surviving whether they have a job or not. They've got a roof over their head. They've got enough food to feed them. If they just start realizing that they are out of the matrix, the best way to help the world now would be to stop jobs. Because if you look at people who say, okay, let's look at this person who's unemployed. Okay, let's look at him. He's unemployed. He's sitting there. Okay, first off, he's eating very cheaply, or she. They're being very frugal. 
people who are unemployed tend not to go out to expensive restaurants. They tend to eat the cheap foods. They tend to not use a lot of waste, and they tend to not burn a lot of gas going everywhere because most of them aren't even driving anywhere except for the grocery store once a week. And usually they're taking buses or other forms of public transit. Here's a person who's working. Well, every day they're using about so many gallons of gas. And when you multiply that by 1,000 times to work or 2,000 times to work, that's about 6,000 gallons of gas in three years, four years, what have you. And 6,000 gallons of gas is a lot. And a human being cannot create the work energy or product replacement to replace 6,000 gallons of fuel. So every person who's actually working in a cubicle or driving to a job is doing more damage to the planet and creating a greater crater of resources than any person on welfare or any person who's unemployed. A person in the hmm. third world does not create the carbon footprint of a person in the Western world. So when they tell us that we should get out and get a job and do all these things that get us working and out there and being a productive member of society, you're a more productive member of society sitting at home and growing your own produce than getting in a car. <laughs> because to get in that car is going to create more of a hole in the resources of the planet than any job currently that people can do to make up for that resource depletion. Interesting stuff, John. Interesting stuff. Yeah, like it's kind of like what happens when you pull the wrong, like a certain, it, it, it reminds me of like playing Jenga and like pulling stuff out from Jenga and be like, you know, like what happens to the Matrix when we pull this one out? Be like, oh, it's still standing. It's still standing. But like we can still sort of change the structure of it in the process. But John, I, I will say thank you, first of all, so much for, for calling in. And, and those of you who, who uh, maybe didn't check out the last episode, tune in to the last few min minutes of it. That's when John called in and uh, really dropped some nice gems there as well. And uh, John's a good friend of ours, and he's part of the Paradigm Shift London community, which I'm happy to say. And we do have some other callers in the on the uh, on the queue who are looking to come onto the air and I would like to be able to bring them on but just checking in John you said uh, you said you got to head out eventually how long, how much longer are you able to stick around with us I've got about five minutes ten minutes and then I have to go okay John well so, um, um, I'd like to hear the guys come on and say hi and let them have their peace but I've said what I need to say tonight <laughs> if I end up dropping out of sight it's it's really great that you have this team of people on and that you're uh, really getting to the meat of it. And I think that you're going to see in the next year greater change than you've seen in the previous 10. Mm. This is yeah. the year of the horse, the wood horse, which is in the Chinese calendar very important to putting many of your plans into actions. So for me, I intend, since tomorrow is Monday... I'm, I'm, I'm just going to end with this, and then actually I, I better head out. But what have I done? Well, last week I managed to go up to Stratford and cause a paradigm shift in the people there just by being in the city with my helmet. And <laughs> I carry it. Oh, you had your helmet out. Nice. And it happens <laughs> to have the camera, the hero camera in it. And people just seeing me and that triggers a what the fuck. And when they say, well, what are you doing with that? I say, well, I can have this. How cool is that? Wouldn't you want one of these? Wouldn't you want to carry around a medieval helmet with you if you had one? Yeah, yeah. to clarify, it's, a, it's idea. not just a helmet. It's a med. It, like John walks around in like this, this <laughs> wizard robe with a medieval helmet that he found in some antique shop or something, and he goes around talking no, to No, I people. didn't. Like I that's... ordered it from a... A, a custom made. Okay. It was custom, custom made. made. But there you go. and 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 tomorrow I'm going to continue my actions. I'm an MSG researcher, and tomorrow I'm going to be calling the uh, probably the National Institute of Mental Health to set up a meeting with the director there who knows me personally, and get more action on the MSG link to obesity, diabetes, and autism. Because MSG is in food and and uh, vaccines. So I'm going to continue to do things that have a ripple effect as of tomorrow and continue this along. So I suggest to everyone calling and everyone listening in, think about what you did this week to change someone's paradigm and think about what you're going to do tomorrow. 
to change someone's paradigm. And uh-huh. Brandon, thank you for having me on, on board again. And every time you're on the air, you're changing paradigm. For sure, for sure. So, well done. Have a great night. Job, team. And we'll be on again soon. All right, John. Wonderful Take to care. hear from you. Take care, sir. We'll talk to you soon. All the best. Sweet. So there you go. There's there's John over for you. And of course, those of you who are looking to be able to connect with him, you can find him on Facebook. I'll post a link for that in the live chat. And his Facebook is John Herb. Last name Herb is E R B. And if you run a search on that, you'll probably find it. But the actual URL is John J O H N period. ERB period 376. You'll find a link for that in the YouTube show notes for this episode. And of course, reminding people that if you're listening to this and you had about a good half hour worth of music at the beginning of the show, that that's just the preliminary version of it. I always go back and I edit out that stuff so that the actual updated versions go right into the episode. You can find all of those at paradigmshiftcentral.com slash PSR so you can take Paradigm Shift with you on the go. You can get it on MP3 and in YouTube, making it accessible so that you can go back Listen to past episodes because there's I, I, honestly like even the first episode that we did, there's some legit gems in there. <clears throat> Excuse me, there's some legit gems in there. So go go treasure hunt for some gems in the old paradigm shift radio episodes. <coughs> I encourage you to do that. You'll get something out of it. And of course, reminding everyone to be able to take action within their paradigm to be able to just do whatever it is that they got to do. But I know we got our good buddy Alon, who's uh, he's on he's in the queue, but we got another person who uh, is queued up ahead of him, and I would like to be able to bring them on too. So we got a person who's I honestly like there's I, I think it's sort of a glitch because their Skype name is showing up as live. I've seen that before. It's not actually their Skype name, but person who is queued up from their Skype. There's only one person. You've been on hold for about 30 minutes. We're gonna bring you onto the air and we're just going to let this person share some of the airtime and just reminding people that this show, this show is a chance for you. It is a platform for us as a community to be able to get our voices out there with a global audience, to be able to keep each other in in sync, in the link, and to be able to just like share our, share our stories and to be able to practice sharing and listening. So with that said, we're going to bring that caller onto the air, and then shortly after that, we're going to bring on our good buddy, Alon, and we'll hear how things are going from him. So whoever this caller is from on Skype, we're going to bring you on to Paradigm Shift Radio. Here we go. Hello, hello, caller, can you hear me? Hello, ca- caller, are you looking to come on to Paradigm Shift Radio? Probably not. Hello? Our, uh, no, yes. Going to mute you now then. All right. Thanks, caller. Yeah, I figured that might have been a glitch. No problem. Whatever that was, shout out to them. And it uh, could have been an alien. I don't know. Could That could have been our big thing right there. That could have been an alien calling into Paradigm Shift Radio. Just didn't stick him, st- let him stick around long enough. But that's another thing. Yeah, stick around long enough with Paradigm Shift Radio. And I guarantee you, eventually, we're going to have some aliens interviewed live on the air. <laughs> I mean, why not, right? I don't know. Eventually, maybe. We'll see, we'll see. But with that said, we're going to bring on our good buddy. Oh, it looks like we got someone calling in from uh, 6612. So we're going to bring on our good buddy, Alon, and then we're going to bring on another caller. And we got a couple other callers, callers from air code 541-508 in the queue. If you guys want to be brought onto the air, all you got to do is press 1 on your number keypad. And just reminding people, you can call in with Skype and through a regular telephone at 347-539-5493. So there we go. Looks like we've got a few more people lined up. So we're going to bring on our good buddy, Alon, and roll with that. So shout out to everyone in the queue. 36 users in the live chat. Please continue to share the show. We got 48 minutes left. Shifting the paradigms. And yes, like as John was saying, building the tribe is such an important thing. Building family is what we are doing here. So again, the namaste, like we are family. We are one. We are working together. And being able to share that with other people, being able to give them access to the tribe and be like, whoa, like there's some cool people here who are doing cool stuff. Like, I, I'm interested in this. I'm attracted by it. And it's inspiring. So we want to be able to tap into that source of collective inspiration and know that each one of us can be an inspiration for other people, can be a beacon of inspiration. So we're going to bring on one of our beacons of inspiration, our good buddy, Alon. And, oh, nice. His whole time was 11-11, just as I looked at it again. So, boom. Synchronicities. What? Synchronicities. Uh, synchronicities. Whatever. Either way. <laughs> All right. Bringing our good buddy, Alon, onto the air. Here we go. Paradigm Shift Radio. Rolling with it once again. Bam. Yo, Bam. man. Bam. <laughs> up in here, that's man. Con- that's the big, the big bang. The big bam. Just the yeah. heart. It went <laughs> in the bubbles. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and 
dude, we dropped some bombs of consciousness today on the street. We just came back from doing free hugs in Toronto. That's why. Oh, no that's way. Why, yeah, yeah, that's why. That's why I, you're I, late. <laughs> that's why we weren't. We, I wasn't on the radio on nine. I was like, yeah, we need to go back. There's a radio show. I'm like, okay, let's roll up. It was so fun. Um, yeah, we did free hugs. Uh, we were supposed to meet this guy and somewhere, and we just took so, just like a couple of times. Say, like, if if it was if if it's gonna be a cool event, we'll just do free hugs there if we we'll feel like it. And 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 it happened, and um, it was probably the most crazy free hugs I ever did. There were so many people, and eventually, like maybe I don't know, 20 minutes after we started, there was TV going like on, asking like question, what what's going on here? What's this free hugs thing? Yo, people who, like which, stopped, which, which I don't know. Some, it it, it was like, a Brazil fest. No, it was like a Brazil fest. It was like local community TV or something. And then another TV okay. came, like two two different channels from the community. I'm wondering and if it's like CTV. If it's CTV, man, then you're gonna be on the six o'clock no, news. No, it time. was. Okay. <laughs> gonna ask my friend like what what he he remembers, but anyway, it was really cool, and there was tons of people took taking pictures and hugging, and eventually, I don't know, maybe 40 minutes after we started, you know, the original crew, you know, of Love Trip, um, we weren't holding signs anymore because we gave them all up. <laughs> Everybody was doing drugs. We literally said. said Sat down, you know, you eating a happen? watermelon, eating a watermelon, and everybody's <laughs> hacking the matrix themselves. And it was amazing. And you could literally see, now we talk a lot about hacking the matrix, like, like someone's from their iPhone, you know, looked at someone from the free hugs, made an eye contact, and then like, okay, matrix hacks, he gave me a hug, and now we're friends, right? But you could literally see like people looking at us, staring at the signs, and like understanding, like going through this fast hack in their mind, like, Wait, 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 wait! This is this is crazy. This is amazing. I understand why you do what you do. Like some guys literally <laughs> understood so fast, and they and they 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 just stuck by us. And like, and eventually, like I told you, we we weren't doing the free hugs. We we're just taking pictures, you know, standing <laughs> and enjoying our creation. And these guys were like, yeah, yeah, give this guy a hug. Give, like encouraging other people on the street to give the guy that was holding a sign because there there weren't enough signs for everyone to give this guy a hug. Now. I'm not working with stereotypes a lot, but there was this guy who was, he seemed like, uh, I don't know, he seemed like a bit awkward in his body language, you know, not someone that communicates so much like regularly, okay? And he was, he was looking like a bit lonely, but anyway, he saw us free hugging, right? And eventually we gave him a sign, and I think it was probably the best day of his life because he got so many hugs, he just stood there, you know, and people just ran to him, you know, he was like, he seemed like the most happy, had the happiest guy on earth, seriously. And there was another girl, and both of them just did free hugs, like, I don't know, for an hour. And after we left, like, we have a video of us leaving to the car, and these guys are continuing doing free hugs with the signs we gave them. And also, like, to, to finish it up, you know, with, with the cream on top, vegan cream, obviously, um, there was this police, the police officers going through there. And I told this guy holding the sign, dude, this is the chance. To break, the, you know, to, to do it. Those police officers need hugs. They're sad. They're on duty and they need the hug. And he he walked to them and he <laughs> gave them hugs and also gave them a hug and it was a very joyous moment. <laughs> and <laughs> Matrix hacks, man. <laughs> Matrix hacks. There it is, man. Dude, that's awesome. There it is, fellas. Please, please, I encourage you to take part of the paradigm shift activity wherever you are. Not just about like paradigm shift as a symbol, you know, like like what we're doing here is the paradigm shift radio, but literally shift the paradigm. Whatever you, you do, just shift the paradigm inside yourself. Take a sign. It's so easy. It's so simple. We we always like understand more and more levels of ourselves. We go into in, in, in deeper levels and we understand how simple it is to do it. It's just love, you know? Mm -hmm. Just take Just take the sign. Even take the cardboard from behind your supermarket write something on it and just walk into the streets and you won't believe the magic because people are looking for it. They want to shift the paradigm. They're just looking for someone to say, hey, you want to shift the paradigm? You want to do something? Yeah. You know, that's, that's what's going on. It's also on, on Facebook, you know. People use Facebook a lot just for, and not that I'm saying it's wrong, but, you know, they're doing, I don't know, selfies, talking about what they eat, I don't know. But when someone posts like a free hug picture, they're like, wait, this is something new. This is something never done before. I want, I want to listen to that. You know, I want mm -hmm. to come to that. Something special. And this is what happens on the street. Like everybody just walking, buying food. You know, trying to find some amusement, and then they see like a bunch of people doing free hugs, and it's like, what the hell? And we're literally surrounded by people, and people just like drawn to that. You know, and 
and and families and and people just ask like yo what's what's going on here you know what's what's happening and asking us what is this going and eventually you know we just stood aside and let things happen <laughs> dude that's so awesome man like yeah. oh man this fresh freshly hacked matrix like yeah, <laughs> exclusive to paradigm shift radio just like oh, right off the yeah. bat Getting that raw report from the field, journalist yeah. style too, man. Like, because you you're, don't forget, like you you are a journalist too, and uh, like I encourage everyone to become their own journalist to be able to like document. Because that's you're right. It's like literally hacking the matrix. We always talk about the social alchemy, like using the sign hold and the free hugs, how that works. But then there's the actual process of like taking that concept of hacking and applying it to social media, where we're understanding how to get messages out there to the people who you didn't hear earlier, but John was talking about. John Herb was on earlier and i know you would love to have said hello to them but he said hello oh, yeah. regardless but you know the people who are who are just sort of in that apathetic state out like at home on a couch like even that person i want to be able to encourage and inspire them to try this for themselves because it's like it you can compare it to a video game you can compare like free hugs to the excitement that you would get out of a video game but it's like real it's it's so real and it's real on so many levels but uh, yeah, like just encouraging and reminding people that you can go to paradigmshiftcentral.com and check out the videos that we have up there, specifically paradigmshiftcentral.com slash shiftivism. Shiftivism is the term that we sort of use to refer to the idea of planting like seeds of love in a simple way that are assisting in the evolution of consciousness. So exactly like yeah. what Alon's doing out here, like it, this stuff, and like you're saying, people are seeing it on Facebook, this stuff is becoming a meme but in a good way we often think of memes as like these things that are just like sort of like jokes and stuff but memes are habits memes are like being polite to your neighbor they're not just referring to the internet there's habitual memes like just like the way yeah. how we present ourselves the way how we talk and then even this is becoming a meme the idea of be like, be like yo man like of course we're gonna hug like if I'm your friend if I'm your stranger we can still hug and we can still connect because we don't have to pretend that like I, just because I don't know you I have to pretend that you don't exist and we're not allowed to make eye contact with each other because I that's that's what's messed up like that's where people are at people spend their entire day avoiding eye contact with other humans like exactly. what's going on Something and they don't like want messed to up that's, that, 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 that's messed up they don't want to they, they're just like they, they have command it. of the yeah. matrix you know inside and then like someone's offering them like Shh, let's create eye contact let's be friends like oh sure I was waiting for you all day <laughs> all life you know I was waiting for this moment someone offered me this most simple and amazing thing, just being love. And wow, wow, wow. Yeah, everything, oh, every oh. word you said is accurate, you know. Live She's now, just like love that. now. So. Yes, sure, yes. And no, my, my buddy, I just want to shout, give a shout out also to my buddy, Ozlov. He's now on the chat. You're welcome to add me and him. We're on this love trip. This is like a moving paradigm shift community. It's like going on wherever. And please join us. Yeah. Uh, in also in Toronto, we want to set up a paradigm shift community in Toronto. So everybody in Toronto area, start you know contacting us and and let's talk and let's make some business. We might have another event in Toronto on the 27th, on the 26th. Just saying like that. Also a shout out to Oliver Blythe. is the second time he did today free hugs in Quebec. Yes. Dude, yes. They did, yes, and he posted his uh, image with his friends with his friends on the the world is uniting event. And it's going all over the place, shifting the sure, it is, man. Yeah, man, there's a couple things you just said there that I want to respond to. And uh, if for people who are looking to get connected, those of you who just haven't heard the full story, but go back again, check out some of the past episodes. The lawn's been involved, involved in evolving alongside with this Paradigm Shift project. The long story short, Alon, like being from Israel, came to Canada with his buddies to do this whole love trip adventure where it's giving out free hugs across Canada. You can find that at facebook.com slash go love trip. But now it's evolving. Alon, like I see you as like, you know, one of my like fellow lieutenants, my fellow captains, like someone who yeah. I can tr someone who I can trust to be able to take care of things on their end and just like yes like Alon's in Toronto oh he's gonna shift some paradigms there like he's gonna get up to some stuff together and like that's because that's like the next thing that's on the horizon I just saw Oz posting in the live chat he's saying love trip is going to be arriving in Ottawa in the next few weeks I'm seeing us sinking up there because there's the national forum in Ottawa that is happening. This is a big event where a bunch of Canadians are coming and it's like this huge event and there's going to be a bunch of workshops and presentations and connecting and stuff. Now, is that are you guys going there for that or are you just coincidentally planning on going no, to Ottawa? No, coinc coincidentally, man. Okay, well, <laughs> well then we can Nothing both go to that. Nothing is coincidence, but yeah, you know. 
Sorry. So, so we'll do we'll that. do that. We'll we'll sync that up. Um, that that's going to be my plan is to be able to get to Ottawa for that at least, and I'm sure we'll be able to get get like connected along the way, and even just. People wondering, like, yes, the Ohm Festival where me and Alon met, like, we got some footage of that, but it's not well, something I'm compiling and editing together until I'm in a place where I'm like still I'm still working with Journey to Lucidity too. So I need to do that, then I'll do that. So it's one thing at a time. And of course, like even again referring to the donation ideas from earlier, like that's helping support me spend a lot of my time that's going into the editing of like these awesome videos that are changing people's lives through the inspiration that they're getting out. And they're valuable in that sense. And that's why like I'm committed to doing them. So again, your support helps the whole community. It helps me continue to work from down in my basement. <laughs> <laughs> and to be able to just do this every week with you guys and, and once in a while get outside of my house and uh, spend time and shifting paradigms and doing awesome things. So we got a couple other cute, a, a lot, eh, we got, <laughs> come on language, you can do this. It's just like, <laughs> even language isn't as fast as I need to be for my brain. Exactly, exactly. It's funny, it's just like, here's what I'm trying to say, here's what my body can't catch up with. But regardless, <laughs> like we're we're hyper by nature, man. Like this is, oh, anyway. sure. but I was just going to say, first of all, Alon, you're awesome. And uh, we got just, a couple wait, of callers. Go ahead, before the call, just go ahead. three quick announcements. First of all, yes, Oz please. loves you. He just told me to tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> Second of all, we're coming up with a site. Uh, we have we're building a site right now, so we won't depend on Facebook you know, all the time. So people could come up and and have all the links there to Paradigm Shift and the pictures and vegan recipes and whatnot. We're gonna do it, everything. We're gonna have a love trip site also. And I was just referring to Dave Love here. He's a proper fellow. He's he's talking about a proper hug, right? Each person leans to the left, so the hearts align. Gently squeeze. That is correct. We did this today. Actually, we we taught people to hug on the left side because then the hearts connect. And we actually tried it on ourselves, and really the right side hug and the left side hug are different. When you hug on the left side, it's much more, you, you can feel the other person. And I encourage you to do left side hugs and also mm -hmm. do the soul shakes that when uh, Skull is gonna publish the video, you're gonna learn all about the soul shakes. And actually I've met a businessman today on the free hugs and I've taught him like he was all hyped up about the hugs and about love trip. And so listen, can I teach you something cool? Like. Check this out. This is the soul shake. And he was like, whoa, I'm going to teach some businessmen this shake. I'm, yeah, I'm yes. yeah, this is a revolution in handshakes, man. That's it. It's like a handshake. You can't fool no one. You have to be present. You have to, be, you have to yeah. honor the person in that handshake. Yeah, that's yeah. That's it, man. Like, for sure. And, and those of you who haven't seen the soul shake, you can see it in the original Journey to Lucidity movie. Uh, Facebook.com slash Journey to Lucidity. You can watch that. Like, that's where I first posted the first video of it. But, yeah. And shout out to that. That actually came from my good buddy, Joe. Joe Hatoum. And uh, he's, like, the genius behind, like, Space Light and also in the first uh, Journey to the West movie, which you can also find through ParadigmShiftCentral.com slash movies. Uh, yeah. Those, I mean, just those, those of you who... Um, I'm technically an award-winning Canadian director. Like I like wow. made. I've been making movies for a while, and uh, yeah, like one of the movies that I made like won a bunch of a bunch of awards at film festivals and stuff. So I'm just saying, it's like sweet. Like I got like recognition. Like let's take like something I can do with this and turn it into momentum to create paradigm shifty stuff. Because that's that's where my heart's at. So definitely, definitely, just remind you guys that there's a lot of momentum behind this project. But we only got we only got 33 minutes left in the show as it is, and we got a couple other callers and uh, definitely want to be able to get them onto the air so for the callers who are coming on not not to cut you guys off short but just be mindful and uh, we'll let each person get their moments in and then we'll just continue to get everybody on the air as we can and remind people that there's the after party hangout and also to put in your order for the shift buttons or go to facebook.com slash paradigm shift radio to enter into the draw by sending a message there we'll do that draw at the end of the show but anyways so the caller from air code um Sorry, caller from Skype. No, wait, what do we got here? Okay, caller from area code 580. We're going to bring you on to the air. You've been on hold the longest. So caller from area code 580, and then after that, we'll do caller from area code 720. So caller from area code 580, bringing you on to Paradigm Shift Radio. Here we go. Hello. Hello, Hello caller, can you hear me? Hi, there. Yeah, I can hear you guys. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. So, caller, I was just going to ask, what is your name, where are you calling from, and what would you like to bring to the show related to the topic of shifting paradigms of love? Uh, this is Alex. I'm calling from uh, Oklahoma out here in a uh, little place, Medicine Park. And, uh, yeah, I've been kind of listening. I've gathered, like, two little pages of notes throughout the whole thing. But, yeah, shifting with love. Uh, what was it you said? It was, like, shifting with love, how to work 
how we are creating the shift and how we can, I think you can apply love to pretty much anything, but you know, some little things I wrote down, you know, I think people, you know, I, said, I don't think uh, John had it right, you know, he when he said, you know, so many people are sitting at home, you know, being lazy and not doing a whole lot of stuff. When, I mean, what we want to do is help other people free them, Themselves, you know, help them free themselves from this kind of uh, cultural shock or this arrest that you know a lot of people are finding themselves in. You know, what I do is like I, you know, you were talking about it earlier. You know, pulling different emotions or different feelings from uh, different areas of your life to kind of help uh, feel secure in the moment. That way, you can do the things that you want to do, like go out and make free hugs, and then you know, uh, like uh, with the last caller you know, traveled halfway across the world, from my understanding of it, you know. And uh, another thing I want to talk about is you said, you know, it's it's the 101st episode, and I've been following since, like, 18, I think. I'm not sure. That's awesome. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you talk a lot about planting seeds and stuff back then and, you know, the kind of domino effect and, how excitement can lead that, but it's just the simple, the simple excitement. You don't have to do a whole lot. You don't have to make great changes. Just a little bit here, a little bit there, and before you know it, mm-hmm. two years, three years later, you know you're sitting here with 101 episodes of something that's changing people's lives and inspiring other people to inspire. What is it you said in one of your aspire to inspire? That's right. I like yeah. that. Yeah. And it's. It's it's all about, you know, the action that you you do for the individual self and I don't think people are being lazy by sitting at home, you know. I I really can't afford to go out a whole lot of places, you know, and I live way out here in the country, so you know, I have to sit at home. But you have what is it? Uh, the planting of seeds and the domino effect is a, a certain building of synchronistic uh incidents or co incidents as you cleverly uh, said that earlier, and you kind of want to you want to string together, you know, uh, certain instances, and you want to string together these synchronistic events in a, such a way that it becomes your story. You know, it becomes the the that gets added into the the source that you know your experiences aren't just forgotten; they're not just thrown away. You know, they actually get put back in and recreated, and then it helps you recreate more of that, and it's a never-ending loop. You know, and but I think to where we're we're at now, a lot of people are starting to see, and me especially, when you know the seeds that you've planted, even though they were small ones, they are still at this point showing some kind of growth. You know, I have a little chart that says you plant the seeds, and then you get the momentum, and then you get growth, and then that and that behaves, you know, exponential growth, and then where where can you take it? You know, you have to ask yourself what you want to take. Mm-hmm. You know, and change every step of the way. You have to change the details of the structure of the reality that we find ourselves in every day. You know, we're always just kind of sitting around doing nothing, but it's how you want to do nothing and how you, I guess, put your intention into the actions and the things that you want to see in the world, and then you start seeing it more because other people like it, so they see it and they do it. And, mm-hmm. you know, that's kind of the type of society we have. You know, we do what other people are doing because that's kind of, it's what feels, you know, we can connect with those people on that level because of that. And I think it will, when you see these different examples, you know, in everyone's individual life, you see different examples in your life that show to you kind of your, where you're at, kind of like milestones or markers or, mm-hmm. you know, just little things like that. And you can kind of nod and say, yeah, this is where I'm at, but where where am I going to see the next milestone? Where am I going to see the next, you know, marker telling me, hey, you're, you're almost there, keep going. And then eventually, I mean, you just never stop going. You can never stop creating. This is just a, a, a fraction of the experiences that we're having now. So, I mean, so we're paying attention to it. We're tuned into this frequency. And our goal is to raise the frequency. Be as excited as you can about anything and just let it, let that, that free flowing kind of state just take over you and then then you know, it's all good. <laughs> I, I yeah. agree with you, man. I agree. It's just being being really being excited about about everything is 
raise your own vibration. It doesn't matter where you will raise everybody's vibration around you. <laughs> well, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, man. Like there's there's a science to it. You can you can sort of bring it back. I mean, even just you know, there's metaphors that are just like all throughout nature. But uh, yeah, like I I love just you know go go look at water. Just go throw stones into a lake and remind yourself that that's what you're doing each time you walk out of your house. Or at least that's the potential for what you have to do. And, and like how big of a splash do you want to make? But you're right. Like it's not always about making a super huge sp- splash, but almost like a strategic, well placed one that can be even more effective. So yeah, play. You know. It's it's more about like being intelligent about your actions and then just also being able to follow your intuition and know that like the universe is going to meet you halfway. It wants you to do this. Like that's the thing. Like this isn't, there's an objective to all this stuff. And, and that's what really encourages me is that like, I know that there's more to this reality. Like I know this through my own experience and I can't just go around telling people this, but what I can do is I can create portals. I can create opportunities where they'll be able to discover it for themselves. Cause I don't want people, I don't want to take, away people's like aha moment by just being like here watch this video like this will tell you everything but rather to be able to just be like hey look over there and then see what they do mm-hmm. about it but uh, I, I was just going to say was it caller was his name Alex or yes Alexander yeah. Alex uh, whatever Alex? Cool, man. But yeah, like I really like I really like what you had to say, and just I think definitely don't be discouraged by the fact that you might be in the middle of nowhere, like you or anyone else. Because even if you do just have a small group of friends, just notice what you can do within that small group of friends. Especially if those are the people you're going to be hanging out with. Imagine how awesome it would be if all of you guys began to start like exploring things together. And like something as simple as that may come from just like introducing topics like lucid dreaming. That's just one of my favorite topics to introduce, and it does open people up to the idea that we're multidimensional beings by nature, which, as Alon said, brings a level of excitement into things. Whether that's the conscious idea at the forefront of your mind or it's just, like, the idea of just, like, promoting love in general. But, yeah, like, there's a lot of things to be super excited about within this reality. It's a pretty cool place to be, if I don't say so myself. But, yeah, I don't want to... um, (laughs) I don't want to take up too much of the of, of the time on the air. We we have a few callers on, which is an awesome thing to see. We literally got about six callers in the queue, so I'll try to keep my talk to a minimum and see if we can bring on a couple other people. So we're going to bring on a caller from area code, what would I say? Yeah, I'll, caller from area code 720 uh, next, but just passing the, ma- passing the mic back to Alex. Alex, was there anything else that you just want to say to the people, words of inspiration or thoughts to leave them with? Mm-hmm. I think I'll have to go back again to uh, something uh, John said. You know, he said, do something new that you've never done. He said every day, but every day is practical in my opinion. You know, I want to, you want to be realistic in your intentions that you're putting out there and your goals that you're setting to a degree so that way, you're like you said, the universe can meet you halfway. You know, you have the, the details that you like. You have the, what is it, Abraham Hicks always talks about great, you know, a uh, channeler on YouTube, she talks about the, you find what you do want and you find what you don't want and we're constantly sifting through situations and we're finding out what we do want and what we don't want. But the structure's still the same, so the only thing that's changing is our details and our perspective. And we can control pretty much both of those. So when you let that kind of sink in a little bit and or kind of you tweak your brain to the possibility that, hey, you know, you are... You are. Every time you think a thought, you're creating a certain energetic momentum. You, that, you know, each time you build a certain momentum, that becomes a, a self-sustaining idea. And that, you know, mm. just like Jason Silva about you know, bootstrap complexity and exponential and other people add ideas to that. And before you know it, it's a cultural meme. You know, like mm-hmm. enlightenment is a now. You can show a picture of me. Buddha somebody else and you, you could instantly know and you know, maybe that's where we're going. And yeah. Who knows? You know, you, you can do anything at this point because, you know, you have government crumbling. You have you know, all kinds of this crazy stuff. At the same time, you have so much light, but it's so concentrated and so few. And we want to kind of branch that out. We want to expand it because the more we can expand it, even just a tiny little bit, it'll expand itself even that much more. So you don't have to feel like you have to do it all yourself. It's not. You know, mm-hmm. and I think that's where it's the, you know, break the shock, break the arrest, move, put yourself into action. And once you do that, the action will come and it's almost like a flow. You just kind of got to drive, you hold the steering wheel and it'll it'll take you where you want to go. 
Mm -hmm. For sure, man. Definitely. Sweet. Alex, thank you so much for, for sharing your voice uh, on the show tonight. Uh, just considering we're just moving through callers, uh, do you mind if I just sort of uh, drop you, not drop you, but just sort of like put you back on mute and then we'll just bring other people on? Is that cool? That, that's great with me. Thank you for having me on uh, and everybody have a good night. Awesome. Thank you so much, man. And just uh, send me send me a message on Facebook just so I know which profile is yours, and then I'll be able to share that with people also for uh, anyone. You know, just, again, reminding people in the live chat, post your Facebook profiles and just encourage other people to invite you. This is a chance to connect with people all across the globe to make new friends. This is about building the tribe, so definitely get on that. So, again, Alex, thank you so much for being on, and, uh, yeah, I would love to be able to chat more with you again sometime. So, Absolutely. Cool. Thank you. Cool. Thanks, man. Cheers. All right. So we're going to bring on caller from area code 720. And then from there, we got caller from uh, Skype named Starshine. And we're going to bring them on. And we still got Alon with us. Alon just sort of like wingman co-hosting this as it is. And uh, yeah, we'll just... (laughs) Baba. But um. But yeah, man. We'll uh, we'll bring on caller from area code seven two zero, and then caller Starshine on Skype, and we'll bring and uh, yeah, and then we'll we'll see where we're at. We may bring on more people, but yeah, we'll just go with the flow. And uh, button draw will be at the end of the show. And again, like Alex was talking about the images, how images of Buddha and sacred geometry are becoming memes for just being like aware of outside the box paradigm shifty ideas. Definitely check out the paradigm shift buttons at paradigm at paradigmshiftcentral dot com slash buttons. Order those, get those. They're super super awesome. You'll thank me later. So check out and uh, call it from air code 720. We're going to bring you on to Paradigm Shift Radio. Here we go. Hello, caller. Can you hear us? Yes, I can. How are y'all doing today? Doing pretty awesome. Good, sir. And uh, yeah, I guess you know the routine at this point. What is your name? Where are you calling from? And what would you like to bring to the show? My name is Amir Salem. I am oh, from hey, Denver, Amir. Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going, Scully? Hello, yeah. Alan, Alex. I love you guys. I just want to get that out of the way and give you all a nice, big old spirit-filled hug from across the uh, from the United States. And I love the hell out of you guys. Um, I'm we from love you, Colorado. Man. Love you too, man. From the bottom of my heart to the top of my soul, with every fiber of my <laughs> being, I really yes. do. Yes, 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 yes. So, uh, from Denver, Colorado, I'm calling from Salt Lake City uh, uh, for a little business trip. What I would like to bring to the show is Love 101 uh, on episode 101. I mean, synchronicity, you know, whether we put effort into it or not. I mean, it's it's there, it's happening, and damn it, we're being. We're not doing, we're being. But with, with the Love 101, I mean, we always have to go back to our foundation, back to the basics, back, back to, you know, back to square one to where we build our foundations to where we're able to build these crazy big houses to, uh, and I'm going to speak in metaphors because I believe that the source likes to speak in metaphors through me to be able to actually be able to have people's minds wrap around the concept of love and the point I'm trying to get at. But Love 101, you have a foundation which pretty much holds everything. I mean, it's physics in our 3D reality as well as everywhere else to where if you don't have a strong foundation, you're going to have a creaky house, it's going to be wobbly, and then sooner or later it's going to come crashing down, unfortunately. But if we do, once we do have that foundation, everything does erode, unfortunately. And with this metaphor, uh, the erosion is coming from fear. So it's very good. It's very awesome that, that you've made this episode specifically to going back to the basics, going back to 101, love 101. Yeah. So where we go back to our foundations and we just patch up the cracks, you know, tech, plate tectonics, they move, you know, it, it moves everything around. The only constant in this universe is change. And, you know, it's, it's whether you embrace the change or you just let it push you back even further. Because if, if you embrace the change, if you don't embrace the change, it's like it's swimming in a change. pool. It's killing it. You know, eventually it will happen. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. And nobody wants to be delayed. Uh, nowadays, everyone thinks their time is very precious. Uh, you know, it. We, we just got. We have to go back. We have to take the time to just. If there's a, I'm looking. I'm outside right now. I'm talking to you guys outside in the Salt Lake City sunset. Oh my God, it's fantastic. 
there's mountains everywhere, just cloud. It just rained. I stood outside in the rain for a little bit. And just to be in that constant uh, mentality of amazement, which I learned from my awakening process, which I will go into, that it just it, 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 it gave me new light. It's, it's like I, I died and I came back again, but I still have the thoughts and visions and emotions of my past life. But it, it's like reading another book with a bigger consciousness. You get total different perspectives out of it you i mean it, 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 it like infinite perspectives it it's everywhere mm-hmm. it really is my awakening oh man i was angry i was depressed i i i don't want to say i hated myself i i truly disliked myself and i was always a happy-go-lucky guy and anyone out there listening i mean it's if, if you're just tuning in like you took the first step man you took the first step of faith faith is taking that first step on the staircase and not knowing what the hell is at the top. You're just following your gut and something inside you is telling you, you know what, take that step. I'm going to plant that seed, you know. And it's all about planting that seed and, you know, keeping faith that it will grow. If you have faith that it will grow and give it a little bit of TLC, just like any other plant in this physical 3D reality, you have to water it, sunshine, you know, (laughs) Maybe talk a little love to it, you know, hang out with it. Maybe put a little crystal right there, just, uh, you know, for its growth. I mean, everything, you know. But it's, ah, uh, it, oh, man, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> I just went into it. <laughs> oh well, I appreciate it, Mir. Um, uh, yeah, just take a second to to catch your breath. There was just one thing that you said that just reminded me. Um, there's an old video, one of the earlier ones I saw on the internet, and uh, it's it's uh, David Lynch. And um, he's like, he's talking about consciousness. And I didn't even know it was David Lynch when I first saw it. And he's a crazy director of some awesome movies, including uh, Dune, like the, the Dune movie. Like he directed that, obviously, based on the book. But it was just a basic idea. He's like, he's like, consciousness is like you, you can have, you can, you, can, you can go through this world with a golf ball size consciousness or you can go through this world with like a beach ball size consciousness. So, I mean, consciousness is almost like one's ability to inhabit more knowledge more perception more information more awareness so i mean yeah you can go through life and just be like you know like seeing the simplicities or you can go through and seeing it with like more vibrancy more color and being able to know your relationship to it is more dynamic than just like going through and just like expecting the same thing every time but um amir i I just gotta say we're we're gonna bring on the other caller in the next moment uh but just sort of finish finish your thoughts as as you were if you want to continue please I'm going to go ahead and follow up with, with your thought with David Lynch because I believe I saw the same video. He was at a podium at, at a bullpen, you know, talking. Yeah. And yeah. He came, uh, you know, it, it's like you, it with a bigger consciousness, if you read a book with a golf ball size consciousness, you get a golf ball size thought right. of the book. If right. you read a book with the beef ball, you know, size consciousness, you're going to get a cult, totally different perspective out of it. But with what, what else, everything else that he said, and one thing that really drew, drew me to, you know, to have another, like, aha moment, which I freaking love, is you find your, and he uses this metaphor, which I'll go ahead and end my, um, my speech with. You find yourself in a dark room, you know, and not just, you know, vacant of light, but, you know, fear, depression, anger, and just darkness. And you light one candle. That whole candle lights up the whole room. And you cannot... You cannot vice versa it out. You can't go into a well-lit room and have, like, a little shadow and have it, you know, affect anything. It's just not going to happen. That's how much love is so much more powerful than fear. Love and fear, the only two emotions as we humans think. So that being said, go out, you know, subtract the fear and add the love and let the pieces of the puzzle of your life and your journey fall where they may because the universe knows exactly what to do with those pieces all right all man awesome thank you thank you so much amir for bringing your voice to you, to the radio show tonight and uh yeah you this is two two episodes in a row man so yeah you're getting pretty familiar i know <laughs> what I we know, got going I feel on here fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. i took notes and everything and i was prepared a little scatterbrained last time i believe but you know what I have a voice, so does everybody else, and we want to hear your voice. Please call in. Help us out here. 
Awesome, awesome. Absolutely. And wow. uh, yeah, I will say just apologies to the people who are in the queue because we won't be able to bring on everyone tonight. But just reminding people that the conversation will continue in the after party hangout and you can find the video for that. Sorry, the link for that at facebook.com slash paradigm shift radio after this episode ends. It's a Google hangout, so we'll use Google. So you might need to install a plugin, but you'll have time to figure it out. But yeah, just giving more people a chance to hang out, connect and again, build the tribe. That's what we're doing here. And that's really creating the foundations, the simplicity of being able to shift the paradigms with love is being able to know that we are not alone we are in this together each one of us is contributing in our own ways and together like collectively we are changing the world like we are like changing the bigger picture so it's an awesome thing to have everyone as a part of and i will say the video that i was referring to with david lynch talking about stuff run a search on the matrix of illusion so you can run a search on that in youtube if i post a link for that or run a search on david link david lynch consciousness matrix or something along that but the matrix of illusion will bring that up it's a montage video super awesome it's funny because it's only got like 8,000 views or no 88,000 but it's from 2009 but I guarantee it's one of like the best videos you'll see and that in itself will shift your paradigm and get you really excited to be alive right now so <clears throat> thank you so much everybody for being a part of this episode we're going to bring on our next caller uh, Amir do you do you mind if I you can stay on do you mind if I mute or whatever I'm not your, your audio is okay Amir I'm going to keep you on the air okay Hey, that sounds like a plan, man. I'll uh, I'll chime in when you tell me to. Cool. Sounds good, man. Okay, so with that said, we're going to bring on our next caller with 1111 left in the show. Like, I'm not even joking. Like, it literally is. And uh, they're from Skype, Starshine. So we're going to bring them on, and we'll go from there. So caller from Skype, Starshine, bringing you on to Paradigm Shift Radio. I guess it's Jessica go. Starshine, but I don't know. It probably is. Yeah. <laughs> is this Hello? Seth, hello? Hi. Is this, is this Jessica Starshine? Yes. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. The it, it's a little like Halloween, but we can still hear you. But yes, Jessica from, uh, from 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 Toronto, welcome to Paradigm Shift Radio. What would you like to bring to the conversation? Thank you. Uh it's an honor to speak with you guys. Um Well, first and foremost, um I'll begin with um a philosophy that I hold, which is something that um I use in uh, as a method of interpreting this world, um, the idea of reflection, um, and, and this will relate to love, it'll all tie in, but uh, the idea that everybody's a mirror, and I, I've noticed tonight that uh, um, all of the callers that have called in are all kind of like seamlessly um, ebbing and flowing with one another's consciousness, it's really beautiful, and uh I think it's just like a, a really nice reflection of where we're at in the evolution of humanity right now. Um, and as I, as I was listening to everybody, I've had a really intense evening with my parents. <laughs> um, John, John Herb really touched on some key points there that just uh, struck home, literally. Um, it's been a really intense uh, period of growth for everybody right now. Um, as we all expand into oneness. And um, so as I was mentioning about the mirrors, like, I guess I'll just get a little personal for a second, uh, reflecting about parenting. And I'm having these kind of arguments with my parents, and uh, they're trying to understand where I'm coming from and how I see the world. And I'm sure a lot of people can relate to this. Mm -hmm. uh, with their incarnated family, right? The ones we chose to incarnate with. And... Um, it's just, it's a, it's a beautiful blessing because they really show us um, karmically what it is that we're here to shift through and how it is that we can learn to love ourselves. And one thing I've been debating with that they've been pointing me in the direction is um, how do I, which we're talking about tonight, how do I get out into the world and how do I take action and how much is too much and how much is not enough and at times it can feel, I'm sure you guys can relate to this, it just feels like an uphill battle with not being able to do enough in this world. Um, and the topic that I was going to discuss tonight is um, the idea of doing like action versus non-action. Um, there's a principle called uh, Wu Wei, which is um, in mm -hmm. Taoism. And it's an interesting principle that I, I try to employ in my life, which is the idea of um, being a river. 
And actually, this is a teaching that I learned literally from a river recently. And the river spoke to me and it said, you know, when there's a rock in the river, for example, let's say there's an argument you have with somebody. For example, tonight it was my parents. So, you know, there's an obstruction, there's an obstacle. What does the river do? We could refer to the river as life or we could talk about the river being love. What would love do? Well, love would find the path of least resistance. So, and that's always what love does, at, at least in its perfect form, right? And being human is, is difficult because we are love. And we are love in every part of, every fiber of our being. We're 99% space. And that space, some say, is, is love. It's all love particles. And love is like the glue that holds this world together. Mm-hmm. And so it's an interesting concept um, to talk about going out into the world. Um, and I've thought about this because some days it seems like I can't, like I just don't have the energy. Like it's hard enough for me to just be in this human body sometimes. And um, so going back to this river idea, the river was teaching me not only to follow the path of least resistance, but also to go within. And going within, we observe that the river is always moving and it's always changing. And so... As soon as we start to think that the world is a certain way or we have a certain understanding or we even understand something about love or we even understand something about the person in front of us, that all changes and it challenges us to grow. Um, Anyway, but what I've observed um, is that for me at least, well, maybe for all of us, but I can only speak from my own perspective, um... It's, I think it's all about going within, and I'm starting to realize that outward action is definitely important when we feel called to move and when we feel called to flow like the river. Definitely don't doubt that and, and kind of get out of our own way and, and learn to flow with life. But also, there's an incredible amount of change that we can affect this world just by being. And um, I, I often contemplate the life of monks and mystics and I think for myself, it seems so ideal, but really, I was incarnated in Toronto, and there's a reason for that. And exactly. <laughs> it's like, how do you be a modern mystic in Toronto? It kind of doesn't really make sense. If I was in India, it might make more sense there. But what I've learned is that, no, I can do it. I actually can. I can be a modern-day mystic or monk from the space that I feel most comfortable and that space is within. And, um, you know, if I can share any wisdom or insight, I'm, I'm learning that the best way for me to do this is just to go within and to learn to love, you know, every single part of me, the resistant parts, the challenged parts, the, you know, all the human programmed parts, all those parts that think or feel that I have to do something um, definitely if I feel called to, yes, but um, it, it's not necessarily about doing. It's almost about non-doing, and I think love is, um, yeah, it's it's like the arrow that points us within, and I, I kind of feel like at this point in my understanding of things, the more that I know about, <laughs> it's like, I guess it goes back to the river idea, but the more I think I know about the world, the more I think I know about myself, everything just starts changing and shifting. And then it keeps pointing me within again. So, and and there was a, a caller on earlier that talked about um, uh, the idea of frequency. And we are emitters of frequency, and love is the ultimate frequency because love is everything. So, yes. Yeah. Jessica, <laughs> I want to say that everything you said was amazing. And I also want to say there are many amazing people in Toronto that want to tune into this vibration and start something together. I personally know them, especially from the own festival, and Skull knows them too. And also, you are always enough. What you do is always accurate, you know? Mm -hmm. And I just want to share this little story before Skull wraps the show up because we just got four even less less minutes left. Yesterday we did free accident. It was a very rainy day. We were at Nathan Phillips Square, right? And we brought the signs and everything. We thought it was going to be sunny, but it was rain. So not many people around, but I always told myself, like I told myself in the beginning when I did free hugs, if I touch only one person, 
that's that's Worth the whole it. universe, you know. Only one person, yeah. and that's enough. And that's what we did. We actually there was one guy really happy to meet us, and later on we did some free hugs in the subway. We didn't get a lot of hugs, but every hug was meaningful. So everything mm-hmm. that you do is good, always, always, always. Thank you. Sure. That means yeah. a lot. Before Skull wraps it up, just one more, more second. We Good. we just I just got a message that there's going to be another event in Toronto this Saturday in Queens Park, 2 p.m. So the link right now that I'm posting on the chat is the event. It's going to be updated. It's not updated yet. And join in. Join Paradigm Shift. Join Paradigm Shift Toronto. And let's tune up the world. You know. Right on, man. Awesome. Yes, and thank thank you so much, Jessica. Like that that was like see that's that's the type of stuff that this show is really made for because I guarantee you that there are other people out there who simply just by hearing you talk, even just for the last few minutes, were inspired. Their paradigm shifted. They were just like just like hmm, you know, like because even just the way how you were saying, you know, like uh, your experience isn't just your own. There's a lot of stuff that we're all going through, and we're all able to be that mirror for one another. So thank you, thank you for for being the mirror with us tonight. And uh, yeah, like it's always. It's always nice to be able to have a female voice here on Paradigm Shift Radio. So, but thank you, thank you to everyone for being involved with this show. And uh, we will be wrapping the show up in the next ninety seconds, and uh, just passing the mic over to, or rather, back to Jessica. Jessica, was there any just final words that you want to leave the audience with, just thoughts or anything? Um, you know what? It may sound corny, but for some reason, the there's a quote that's in my head from Mahatma Gandhi. You guys probably know it. And it's be the change you wish to sh- to see in the world. That's all I have to say. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And I, th- I just want to add something. Be the change you wish to see in the world because the world is a reflection of you, you know? Exactly. That's yeah, yeah. Beautiful. So change yourself and you change the world. And exactly. I'll even just add on my own thing to it. And it's this idea that it's choose to be the change that you wish to see in the world. Yeah, so it begins choosing. with the choice. Sometimes yeah. it just takes that 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 step. It takes that extra step, and that's what gets things really moving. That's what, again, that's what plants that seed. So choose to be the change that you wish to see in the world. So we're going to wrap this show up in the next moment, but just inviting everyone to join the after party. And this week's winners for the shift buttons, I drew the shift buttons while, Je- while Jessica was talking. This week's winner for the shift buttons is Michael Hunley, and I'm going to send a message to him. So congratulations, Michael. Thank you so much, everybody, who's been tuned in to Paradise. Paradigm Shift Radio. Go to Facebook.com slash Paradigm Shift Radio for the After Party Hangout. Please support the show if you can, and we look forward to having you on again in the future. Amir, you're unmuted. Everybody join me in saying farewell to the internet. So thank you once again, love internet. You guys. Be love. I love each and every love single now. one of you. Yes. Love, love now. Hate never. Hate that. Emergency <laughs> love now. That's right. Elite Love spiritual now passport. Experience your apocalypse. <laughs> up. Get it over with. All right. Thanks, guys. Talk to you later. One love. Thank you, yeah. guys. Thank you. I'm a fair. One love. Thank you for listening to another episode of Paradigm Shift Radio. If you would like to connect with people where you are and continue the conversations further, then check out paradigmshiftcentral.com slash buttons to order your supply of shift buttons to share with people to help invite them to this global project while also helping make new friends and building local community where you are. Shift buttons are tools to hack the matrix and tap into the synchronistic nature of reality to accelerate our collective awakening. Enter the promo code PSR into your order to receive additional bonus buttons to your supply. Thank you again, and one love.